Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at the distance formula today. This should look pretty familiar, and um, I'll show you why in just a second. Here is the distance formula. It looks pretty complicated, um, but I'm going to explain what the parts of it are and how it works, and it's actually not so bad once you understand what it is. So let's go ahead and take a look at that equation with two different points. The distance formula is basically a way for us to calculate the distance between two given points um, on a graph. That's all it is. And you'll have one point, um, we'll call this one point number one. Um, actually, I think this one's point number one. No, this is point number one. So this will be our x value for x1 and y1. This will be our x value for x2 and y2. All right, and they go right into the equation. So x2, 4, minus x1, negative 3, so minus negative 3, y2, to be 1, minus negative 2. All right, that's how you would use that equation. Now, what that equation really means is this. If you take the two points, it doesn't matter what given points they are, you can draw a line between them, draw a horizontal and a vertical. You can see here horizontal and vertical. And those would create a right angle triangle. This leg from here to here, the x value, or the, the distance there horizontally, is x2 minus x1. 4 minus negative 3, 7. The distance from here to here is 7. Okay, and that's discovered using this part of the equation. So really, we're taking a triangle, hold on, a right angle triangle, and we're putting this length of this leg here and squaring it. Hmm, does that sound somewhat familiar? This leg from here to here is y2 minus y1, 1 minus negative 2. That's the length of this leg. So we put the measurement of that leg here, we put the measurement of the first leg here, we square them and add them together. That's sounding an awful lot like finding the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. That's exactly what this is. This is the Pythagorean theorem in disguise for finding the length or the distance between two points on a plane. All right, so that's all it is, is the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. The only tough part about this is making sure that you keep it straight, whether you're using y2. If this point here is point number one, then it's x1, y1. If this is point number two, it's x2, y2. And the reason that that's important, the distance, if we call this point 1 consistently, x1, y1, and this point 2, that would be fine. If we call this one point 1 and this one point 2, that's fine as well. As long as you are consistent when you're putting them in there. You can't make this x1 and y2 and x2 and y1. That will not work. That's the most common mistake that I see in using the distance formula. All right, so in the previous example, I used this as point number one, and this is point number two. So just to show you that you'll get the same answer, in this equation, I'm going to switch them around. Oh, sorry. Anyway, this is opposite of what I did before. So in this case, I'm going to have this be point number two, and this be point number one. Negative three is x2, and then y, or x1, is four. So negative three minus four. y2 negative 2 minus y1, which is 1. Look at that. We get negative 7 squared plus 3 squared. And the reason why this works both ways is because we're squaring it. So it doesn't matter if it's a negative or a positive. You're, when you square something, you get a positive result. So there we have it, 49 plus 9. So our exact distance from point 4, 1 to the negative 3, negative 2 is the square root of 58. That's approximately equal to 7.62, all right? So this one here being our exact distance, that one being our approximate distance, that kind of shows us a little bit. And again, just to re reiterate that the order does not matter. What really matters, and this I'm going to reemphasize it again, is that when you pick a point, you keep it as being point 0.1 for both the x value and the y value. And then your second point is x2 and y2. That's the most important part, all right? The distance will always end up being positive because you can't measure length in a negative, all right? 
So just make sure that you're consistent sticking those distances in there. Write down this equation and you should be good to go.